Audie Thomas, that kid is going to be a superstar. Uh, you have to uh, keep an eye on him because he is quick. You might miss him. As we are underway, Wake Forest and Boston College. Highly contested ACC as we expected. The Demon Deacons hoping that they have turned the corner on 2024. They've won two straight. They'd really like to get three straight with one more home game on Tuesday before they hit the road. You know, you knock off five straight wins and that uh, that number looks a little different and a little bit more inviting, right? Yeah, it certainly does. And, and this ACC standings are wide open right now. So, you know, it's it's there for the taking for anybody. Playback that was cut out well by Asari. Sydney Paris gets the start. Swiss Army Knife came over from Navy two years ago, and uh, he's just fit in well and has gone anywhere he's been told to go, whether it's an outside back position or up at the attacking wing position. Our referees tonight, Mike Stutt, that it's also Chris Zerner, Robert Leonard, and it's also the side official, the assistant, Yeor. Mike Forrest coming off a victory against East Tennessee State, which was 2-0, but they had to go up against a, a superhero goalie. But they just sat there and pelted shots like this one, and it's right off the side. White, Travis Smith Jr. trying to look for some space. This was good intervention by Asari, and Asari worked to try to cut that one. It was cut out for a minute, but right over to O'Neill. Good pressure early by the Deeks, something that they've not really had a lot of this season early in the first couple of minutes. It seemed like sometimes it gets them, it takes them a little while to get going. So Wake Forest fans will be happy to see them turning the screw right off the gates. Boston College has also been unbeaten in the last two. They tied Louisville. And they tied their rival, Boston University. <laughs> the old Beantown Derby. There's Thomas playing this one back to Kruger. You could see how this team kind of evolved a little bit the confidence because of that back line Kyle though I know they bring in those young young players but how important how crucial it is that you have a wing back like Amani Thomas that can get involved in the attack and create more numbers for your side yeah and and it's been good on both sides I mean even Travis Smith Jr. as a, a converted center back has been able to get forward really really well and it just gives this team another dimension. What, what's required along with that is the ability to track back when you get caught high, and they've both proven capable of that. Deeks working their way already into the attacking third. So accustomed. Just so sitting there in that final third. They uh, have no problems with taking shots at all. They're one of the nation's best. They are the nation's best. I'll tell you a little bit about how dominant they've been at home. But there they are, leading in shots in all of D1. That's a, that's a stat you want, especially if you want to try to move on to the postseason. If you're getting shots, is this one just on the roof of the goal. 
you know, but yeah, but you as a, as a writer for a soccer cow, you know, you look at that and you're like, okay, well, that tells me a lot about this team. This team is getting into that final third. They're having they're having their their way with taking these shots. And there's a yellow card and a little bit of a grab by Kruger that uh, pulled down Asari. Yeah, it was the the position from where that foul occurred, which resulted in the yellow card, and that's going to cause some problems for this back line because such a yellow card early on, yeah, clipped in the back of the heels on a, a long, really just a speculative long ball. You got to be more careful. That's a that's a bit of a rookie mistake there from Kruger, because now you're you're looking at a long 85 minutes on a yellow. That is true. Especially, you know, we just talked about how physical these two teams play. It seems like uh, Mike Stutt is not going to have any nonsense going on. As you can tell right there, that negates that A little push. Trace Alphen, not shy, he's ready to go. Hits the outlet to Travis Smith Jr. If he there for a second, that may have ignited him a little bit, and he's off and running. To the left, Jeffrey Smith. Jeffrey White, pardon me. White. With his right. Just kept it in bounds. The one-two with Travis Smith Jr. Good tackle. White goes down hard. Marco De Santos there picking his pocket. Stop that move in its tracks. The Lake Forest, plenty of numbers behind the ball here. Boston College hoping to get some numbers back. They'll have that chance now with a throw in. Thirty-one players on this Boston College team. Twenty-one have returned from last season. And then you add the spectacular Ask Eklund. Whipped into the box. Little stomp clearance there, but not enough. And Behar will usher this back to C.J. Williams. BC's weathered that early little bit of pressure from Wake Forest and now looking to build their own spell of pressure. Trying to work the right channel, falling down and able to get the delivery inside the 18. That was impressive. Falling down was O'Neal. Yeah, Travis Smith Jr. has got to be careful because an, another uh, Wake Forest will not want another defender on a yellow card and got a little handsy there. Behar with Cooper Flax right into his back pocket. Paris Mitchell was reading that well. Good set of skill by Burkhart there. Yeah, this has been real nice from BC. Wake Forest pressing really high, and they've handled it quite comfortably. Backing away from the press, they will allow C.J. Williams some space to work it to his right. Eklund coming, bearing down hard. And Monty Thomas right here with his heels at the touchline. It'll be really fun to watch him evolve, too, as a player as he gets comfortable. And as Sidney Paris ad-libbing. Moved it to his left, hoping to hook that one in that far post. Behar. And close to the touchline, O'Neal. Eklund, O'Neal, Thomas jockeying him. 
forcing him to go to the byline, plays the ball brilliantly. Yeah, that went out over the end line. Good eye, partner. That's a, that's Looked a good like ball, just, though. Yeah, and that's the key is from our vantage point is if you can see white in front of the ball. Yep. Yep. One full rotation out. Hey, a good job by Xavier O'Neill to try to play it off. Had the right idea, right ball play, just went out of bounds. Something to keep an eye on, too, though. If he's able to get to that byline and play those diagonal balls, that is a recipe for disaster if you're Wake Forest, especially when you have somebody like Eklund making a run. Here's Kruger from the Philadelphia Union Academy. This is intended for Amadi Thomas to try to get in behind the line, but not quite enough weight on it. Travis Smith Jr. gambled, may have gotten a little bit of a shove. He'll have to retreat and get back. As Wake Forest will now work to get their numbers back. O'Neill gets it. And off the back heel of Sidney Paris. That was uh, not what he had in store, but Trey Southen, good reading on that ball. Able to claim it up. Dos Santos. Paris Mitchell, the only one to kind of give some pressure on those center backs. Two thrillers last night. I don't have a thriller here. Brewing here in Winston-Salem. Amani Thomas let that one go over to O'Neill, and O'Neill once again trying to get to that byline. Here's the one touch swing inside the box, played in by Behar, and rising just a little too much and off target, but well played. That's well designed. Good ups too. Yeah, and, and uh, you know Wake, Wake Forest paying so much attention on those lofted deliveries to Eklund, who's six three, and usually they would think the target of a cross like that that can open things up for other players. Jeffrey White, the overlap by Travis Smith Jr. He looks up, thought about the switch over to Sidney Paris. But the ball taken away and out to Boston College. Cooper both, Flax. Both sides showing attacking intent early here and, and building well, but neither side really to like able to establish, you know, long, lengthy possession or or knock it around. They're just as soon as they get the ball, they're going forward. Yep. You know, even at the risk of losing it. This is a this is a get it and go type of game. I was about to ask you what your thoughts were. On. That's uh, what I was thinking. So it's just end to end, but no real possession time. And that one is rolled right into the basket of Trace Alpha. You can't ask for much better service there. Mm -hmm. If you're Ask Eklund, then he just got because that is a huge opportunity and anywhere else but at the goalkeeper it's one nil right now yep. that's one of those chances you look back on at the end of the game and go mm, could have had that one yeah i think you saw trace out from clutch that a little tight too they're thinking man that could have been disastrous still nil nil boston college with two shots in the Demon Deacons with just one. 
see if they can construct something. As Paris Mitchell gave it a little bit of a ride right into the hands of Klein. Klein preseason ACC, all ACC. Very good goalkeeper. Digs four, three and three on the season. But they have knocked off two straights. All it takes is a ripple, right? That's right, one, one hit, one moment and one flash into the back of the net and suddenly the whole game changes. That's what's beautiful about this sport. Austin College taking that into account as they try to penetrate in with Dos Santos. Monty Thomas kind of Baiting O'Neill to take this on the wing. This time O'Neill got the best of him. And that ball was well delivered. It was as well. critical flick, uh, flick on by Cooper Flax, who just got a little bit of a touch with his head to that and redirected it away from the defender. We've seen a handful of good deliveries by Boston College. O'Neill. Here's Behar. Boston College, you know, they may have not had a sparkling record last year, but any time they played, they were in, involved in the game. I mean, it was still a difficult task to go there and beat them. As Wait. Paris Mitchell tried to hop, skip, and a jump, but didn't work. It's moments like that right there right. where, you know, whatever the record, you can always know for sure Boston College is a pain in the rear to play. I think it's a good illustration of the ACC that say they might be at the bottom, but I mean, nobody wants to go up there and play them. Nobody really wants to play them at home either because they're going to give them fits. I mean, how many times we've seen dramatic endings between these two teams on this pitch? It was just one nil last year in a rainy, rainy afternoon. But uh, there is Bob Thompson, his fifth season at Boston College. Didn't quite get goals last year, so they decided to go after some big goal scorers. Of course, they brought in, as we mentioned, Ask Eklund, who was one of the nation's best at scoring at Duquesne. They're also transfer from here, Wake Forest, Leo Garino, who we haven't seen yet, but. Hoping to finish is Eklund. Sniping the top V there on the right. What a save by Trace Alfin. Oh my goodness. Tipped it right off the, the woodwork. That is a spectacular stop. This is headed for the back of the net, but he oh, gets yes. a touch and pushes it off the crossbar. Incredible. And that had some venom to yes, it. Yes, it did. My apologies to Trace. I thought that only hit directly on that upper V part, but yes, if it wasn't for Trace, that would have been rippling the net. Bassett Umar has been rattled up, looked like he may have gotten a slap in the face. But uh, he's been key too. Uh, talk about transfers, he came over from Dayton. Just very quick, water bug like that can create a lot of problems, especially if you. You're thinking that uh, you've got some space, and next thing you know, you got <laughs> number 22 bearing down on you. Well, and it's impressive, too, what, what Bassett Umar has been able to do this season and sort of establishing himself as, as a starter over the last few weeks. Bobby Muse picks his spots with transfers, and so for him to come in and, and make this kind of a mark in his first season is, is a, a testament to his hard work. And he worked really hard to get back into match shape. There was Coach Muse at his 
tenth season as a head coach of Wake Forest. Was an assistant here, and then went off to Denver and uh, got recognition for what he did at Denver. And immediately, once there was vacancy here at Wake Forest, he was the big name that uh, the fans kind of wanted. To. Didn't take him long to get back here to Winston-Salem. 53 regular season wins since he got here in 2015. We, we were talking to him a couple of weeks ago where he said, you know, 10 wins a season is usually really good, right? When you're assessed as a head coach, 10 wins a season is, is sort of a good benchmark to shoot for, and then you move on from there. He said, we could lose out the rest of the year, and I would still average 14 wins a year. So, you yeah, know, what, what he's been able to do here at Wake Forest is sensational, and, and the credit goes to the fact that for him, 10 wins isn't enough, yeah. right? Yeah. They want... They want 14, they want 16, they want to beat everybody else's benchmark. Yep. And that's what they've built here at the pro as a program. And so 10 wins would feel like a massive disappointment. And that's the kind of expectations they want to have. On the attack, here's Boston College once again threatening and once again Trace keeping this clamped at nil-nil. Wake Forest relying on their goalkeeper early on. Boston College, now they're starting to turn the screw and put Wake Forest under siege, but Trace Alfin, always reliable and acrobatic stop. The corner for Boston College. Just under 26 to go in the first half. Kept on a line drive. This is now clipped, and Trace Alfin will claim it with authority. He has been busy. Take a look at this last shot here. That is trademark Trace Alfin right there. Laying out, pushing it away. And now he wants his crew to get some goals, to give him some comfort. Here's Borso who's come in, makes the switch to Colin Thomas, who's also come in off the bench. Overlapping is Amani Thomas. Now Flax will play to the right back up as the support. Will he switch? Borso has his hand up on the far left. Thomas gets it with Colin Thomas to his left. Sends it curling. And Rabio was way up in the air. And man, was he ready to feast on that. That's a brilliant cross here from the right side. Thomas just putting it on a platter. And I think Rabio just got under it a little bit. Maybe one half step further back. And he cocked his head back, too. He yep. was ready. Still just a smidge off, but I loved it. Well, it, you know, we were talking about how Wake Forest fans have been spoiled because of how what Bobby Muse has done. And, you know, through some text messages, it's, well, what's wrong with the guys' team? You know, what's wrong with them that... And uh, see, they, well, A, look, look how many players they just brought in. Okay, and then look how many shots they've put on where they're the best in the country. Uh, not only in shots per game, but then shots on frame. And then they go up to Syracuse, the place that they never win, and beat Syracuse. So it's like that record might not be what you're used to, but... Yes. Rome wasn't built in a day. I yeah, mean, and when you know when you talk about leading the country in shots, right? There, that can mean a number of things. First, not every shot is the same, right? You want to have high quality shots. You don't need a high volume necessarily. But when you're getting a high volume, it does mean that you are making things happen up front. Unfortunately for Wake Forest, they have come up against some absolutely sensational goalkeepers and not just goalkeepers but goalkeeping performances <laughs> yes. i mean uh, time after time after time they have faced a goalkeeper's best day and when you're the kind of program that we talked about with wake forest everybody wants their best shot against you and the, the deeks have certainly seen that this year it, from netminders it, it almost it looks looks surreal sometimes um because 
with what we've seen by the opponents and their goalkeepers, especially Tuesday nights, has been nothing short of a fairy tale for some of these teams. I mean, they just come in here and put up highlight reels after highlight reels. On top of that, frustrate Wake Forest because they're just living here in the final third, pelting shots, but they have to settle with a 2-0 win on Tuesday, and those two goals were what, off a, a skip and a deflection? Well, Boston College is uh, not living up to that so far. They haven't even allowed much for the uh, Wake Forest attack at all just yet, and they're the ones with two good chances here today so far. Yep, absolutely. O'Neill, he's been really, really prominent in this first half for Boston College. Bay Hart, highly recruited. C.J. Williams from Valley Stream and Long Island. Behar. Oh, what a takeaway by Colin Thomason. That might result in a card, and it is. I think that's a little harsh, Ty, to be honest with you. I think that was just a 50-50 challenge. He got there a little late. Well done by White to get there first. Yeah. But I don't think there's anything dangerous in that. That's that's not. Yeah. That's harsh. Yeah, I, I agree. Harsh on that. Well, that was Colleen, Marty Colleen. Genuine it's attempt to play the ball. Studs down. The only reason why I knew that was a car just by how the uh, official ran over. <laughs> he there went right with to authority. It. Credit to him. He he just made his decision right away. See the foul count at four to two. That will definitely rise. Sent in, C.J. Williams falling down. This will result in a corner. And this is what we talked about before, Ty. I mean, look at this. Speaking you, of a wall, this yeah, guy's a wall, too. So. You've, <laughs> you've got uh, five season highs for goalkeepers in saves made over the last six games for Wake Forest, including last time out when they had 14 saves from Cuadio. Credit to the Deeks, they still managed to, to pick up a, a relatively comfortable win, but what a performance that was. Yeah, we were just amazed by it, stunned. And so was Wake Forest, speaking to them after the match on Tuesday. Here's the corner, curling. Right out off the line is Klein, and he punches it away, but still right in the attacking third. Wake Forest once again hunting over the head, and Pleading was Prince and Ponza saying, I didn't touch it last, but the AR is not going to buy it. It will be a goal kick. And Brennan Killeen, remember between Brennan Klein from Phoenix, Arizona, six foot three, second in the league in saves coming into tonight, 10th in save percentage. So we have a wall tonight too. That's six foot three. He's uh, part of the ACC preseason watch list. Last year had 45 saves. This is the Thomas Thomas connection. Although Thomas, good defense by Behar, keeping Thomas unable to turn. Deke's a little fortunate there too. Yes, that looked yes. like a clean tackle, at least I thought live. Could have been a dangerous one. Mike Studd is not allowing a lot of, to go on. No, he yeah, heard us he, talking about yeah. the physicality in pre <laughs> in pregame, and he said, "All right, we're going to lock this down early." We should have had an interview with them before the match. What do you expect to see? He's trying to keep everything even keel. As we tick under 20 minutes to go in the first half, nil nil. Three points can do a lot, and both of these sides know it. The seasoned vet Colin Thomas trying to probe that pass to Jeffrey White. A little out of the reach. Here's Perez into the pocket. Flax. Flax has his head up looking to possibly go to Amati Thomas. And plays a simple ball. It's Perez 
to Prince and Ponza, and then another inserted pass. You could see how Boston College really has crowded those central lanes, Kyle. Yeah, they're doing a really good job anticipating the Deeks movement into the attacking third and clogging the, the passing lanes. Borso is what he does so well. Just a freshman. Travis Smith Jr. Borso trying to turn. Maybe with a bit of a pool of a jersey, but play on. Now here comes Amadi Thomas moving out the width of this pitch. Colin Thomas gets it outside of the foot right back to Cooper Flax. Flax trying to insert it. Rushing back to get possession back. And Ty, what's been weird about this last couple of minutes for Wake Forest in the attack, we've talked for so long about how they lead the nation in shots, and it feels like they're trying to walk the ball into the back <laughs> of the net. Yes, they are. Flax wants it. This is going to be put on the ground by Rabio, and he's not exactly happy on how he put that one into play. You could tell right after that was hit off the laces. He kind of like scuffed it. Yeah, great work to get room for the shot right here. Great step around the defender. There's a window there. If he could elevate that, maybe find the top right corner, but just couldn't get under it. And listen, you you want to see if you're a team, if you are a manager or a coach of a team that you're seeing that they're putting 20 shots per game, right? And nine, whatever, all on frame. I mean, you're looking at those stats and you're saying you like what you see there. That, that's something you can build uh, from. I, I, you're, yes. If you're in the neighborhood, you're knocking on the door one day. You keep doing it. Someone's going to answer. Absolutely. And, and from what we've watched, that's what we've fathomed. But I. I, I would, the data analyst in me wants to say, well, quality of shot matters more. Right, but it's also showing the field tilt, right? I mean, but the real weird stat is, is about those corners, but that's now slowly creeping up as they're now 25th in the country. Here's a shot from Flex! Woo! <laughs> the whole crowd thought it went in the back of the net from the angle this way that it went past the far post. That was a really good chance. He had acres of space to shoot and Out was seeking off. that lower left corner. Credit the goalkeeper. He looked like he might have had it covered, but maybe there was a little bit of a window to sneak that in. Boy, this crowd really wanted that. They thought that was in for a second. I thought that was in. Flax looking for his fourth goal of the season. made the all USL two first team over the summer with seven goals very little appearances too. and then uh, Trace Alphen played together as Flax gets it in to the center nice little pocket Amani Thomas to Colin Thomas Perez once again here we go Kyle building and working and creating opportunities as they now move into the final third again. Oh, good ball. Good ball play. Still looking for some space. Slid it over to Amani Thomas from Jeffrey White. Amadi Thomas close to the byline, trying to clip this one in. Who's on the far stick? Here's Borso. Borso, second touch. Thought about it. We'll pull it back. Man, I thought Borso was going to fire there from a tight angle. Might have been there for him. And dancing around. Looking for the delivery. Right in front of goal. But no dice. I mean, if I'm if I'm a Wake fan, I would say that I like seeing these deliveries across the goal of mouth, or the, the you know the mouth of goal. But it's uh, yeah, you got to execute. But at least those balls have been played there. Yeah, and they've been dangerous. I mean, that even wasn't far off from somebody at the near post. Just looking for the finishing touch. Both teams are. 
And that's sometimes what these ACC games come down to is, you know, when you've got two teams trying to hit each other with some jabs that, you know, it, it comes down to finishing, right? It, it's an even match back and forth. Each team has chances. Who can find that moment to to strike? Looks like they're reviewing action. something. Yeah, they're review something here. I'm not exactly sure. We'll find out here in a minute. Maybe something in that touchline incident there when the ball went out of play. I'm not quite sure. I thought we might have a hi hydration break since it's been summer still. Well, even maybe, maybe the, a handball incident on one of those crosses. I'm not quite sure. We didn't see anything up here. Let's take a look at this on. Ooh. So this is what they're looking at. It, the even here's here's the thing. Good time. job by replay. So here's now I have to separate my own opinion right of the game from the rules. A lot of people would see that and say, well, that's a handball. By rule, the determining factor there is whether they think his hand is in an unnatural position or not. It's not. No penalty. Yeah, and I'm glad because to me that one's a gray area. But to me, my my determining factor is. Was advantage gained, right? Was an advantage gained by the, the ball hitting the arm? There, no advantage was gained because where the arm was positioned, if it didn't hit his arm, it just would have hit his chest, right? Nothing would have changed. So I don't have any problem with this. Plus, there's that slight deflection. It makes things tough. There's, to me, there's nothing in that. Good, well done by the official to take a look it's tough on that and, and spot it, but then decide to stick with it because, to me, n nothing there to change the game with the penalty. Yeah, it was enough to, to look at it. For sure. And good job by replay, because we missed it the first time. <laughs> but we still sit nil-nil. C.J. Williams. And that was what that video review was about, to see if he did indeed intentionally use the hand to knock that one away. Yeah, how about credit to the production crew for catching that? Goodness. Well done. The best of the biz. As much as I wish I could say I could see everything up here. Sometimes we need some help. And we do. You got a great director by the name of Drew D. Mark Antonio. I mean, he will make sure that he gets those things going. Credit to our director. Under 13 to go in the first half. Nothing has resulted in any change of the score line. Still nil nil. Oh, well done, Amadi Thomas. Ooh, still got away with the guess he played advantage. Now, Amadi Thomas. I guess that's the only way that you try to contain him. That was Brian Toro, freshman from Revere, Massachusetts. Has six starts in 11 appearances now for Boston College. Clock just under 12. Perez, Rabio, good cutback. Rabio, left foot. Great save. Oh, you could see the thought process with Jeffrey White trying to cradle that one down and then second touch banger, but just couldn't get that second touch to work. Brilliant stop by Klein from close range. Those point blank shots take a lot of quick reflexes. Good turn. Shot right foot just away from the frame. And I mean, just, just small gray areas. They're missing, but not by much. Here's the first opportunity. Watch that chop back and then Rabio. That's Oof. great hit by that right hand. And here's the most recent. Well, look at that great turn. The shot, but. 
that first uh, save tie. Yes. I mean, yes. that was wonderful, but it was awkward. <laughs> that was not <laughs> the most comfortable save that Klein has ever made in his life. Really well done. Great reflexes to get the arm down on it, but you could see if he is just a fraction of a second late on that thing, it's it's in the back of the neck because he doesn't have his body in the way to back him up. Just uh, pure reflexes by Klein there. Jeffrey White trying to line this thing up to see if he can close down that passing lane between where that set piece is and where Behar is. Just didn't have the contact he wanted on it. And now here's a break for Wake. A step, good step, Rabio. Well played into space. Watch the speed of Imani Thomas, and he's tripped up. He was ready to shoot out of the gate there. That looked like it went out of play. Mm -hmm, sure did. They are good for him to play it off. And there's a pool. And here, and this is a Boston College Wake Forest match. Under nine in the first half. Carino has checked in, the former Demon Deacon. From East Rockaway, New York. Kind of a surprise move to move to Boston College. Yep, we were all a bit surprised at that. He still keeps up with his, bu his buddies here at Wake Forest. And Wake Forest looks like uh, they are going to make a change. It's uh, Bilal who's now coming in, the freshman. Another young player who's made an impact this season. Had a couple of big moments earlier in the year. Massive for a freshman. Can you imagine when he gets acclimated? And especially on set pieces, just bowling ball. Nice curl with a tail on that one, but a little too much weight. That will go out of bounds. Carino's come in, the senior from East Rockaway. He was the one that delivered the corner versus Louisville to Eklund in the 86th minute to get that tie, get one point. Way off the line, Klein. He's very comfortable with his feet, too. You'll notice. That's the, that's the way of the keeper now, nowadays, not uh, like the Peter Schmeichel days. He was a pretty good dang step. good goalkeeper. Yeah, he though. was. He was. And an offside flag goes up. But it was said that, I forget what manager said this, that they always complain about keepers back then, that they were just handball players. Ironically, Schmeichel was a handball player first before he became a keeper. Rabio. He's dancing. He has uh, 
has really been active here in this first half. So trick, trickle down under six minutes. Bilal trying to turn. It's Colin Thomas steering that one back to Amani Thomas. Kruger. So, and to run two to call for it to now. Thomas now into a pocket. Colin Thomas moving, sliding it over to Borso. Borso can hit it from there. Borso with some pace, but no challenge at all for Klein. Yeah, that from that distance and that angle, he has got to pick out a very tiny window in that upper left-hand corner. Might almost be better to try and find the top the far right corner because you might be able to wrong foot the goalkeeper a little bit more. Just didn't quite get the contact, but not a terrible idea. Bravio spun around a little bit there. Delightful evening, delightful day today in Winston-Salem. Our hearts go out to those that uh, did get affected by the hurricane. That is very tough to see, especially to our neighbors at Nashville. Here's a shot that just goes right, maybe deflected. No, it's not. And Rabio, who's had his share of looks, but that one way off target. The other one wasn't so far off. Klein is furious with his defenders for not covering this. Because if a winger is going to be able to cut inside all the way maybe to the penalty spot and take a shot where with some space and an opening, goalkeeper is right to say, hey, what are we doing here? Yeah, yeah. Can't let a guy cut in like that with space. Kruger may have had his jersey pulled back a little bit. Well, he's getting baptized to this uh, little tiff between these two teams. Boston College, it's a beautiful campus, too. Got the chance to visit there this past spring. Of course, you know I love Boston, but the facilities there are fantastic, and this also looks fantastic as far as an opportunity for Wake Forest. Borso trying to maneuver and ski his way in. Slides it to the right to Amadi Thomas. The Thomas-Thomas connection is now Colin gets it. Colin, left foot. This is deflected, and in. Bilal does it stand. Flag stays down, it will stand. And with two minutes and some change, Bilal has now made it 1-0. Well, when both goalkeepers are on their game, sometimes that's what it takes to get past it. A little bit of a nick off someone on its way through, but they will take it. This Deeks team has been pressuring, looking for a goal over the past 10 or 15 minutes, and finally found a way to cash in. Colin Thomas with that hit, and it falls perfectly for Bilal. He is certainly onside. Wow, Thomas with that searing missile that was enough to deflect and land right into the pathway of Bilal, and he finished it. Well, that's not what, three goals that we've seen in the, since Tuesday that's caused either like some ricochet or something that, again, is, a, is unpredictable, right? and, and it ends in the goal. Certainly, but unlike a shot that takes a deflection and ends up in the back of the net, that's still required a finish from Bilal. They're going to look at this to see totally if agree. he was on side, and I think that's fine. It was close, and this is a big moment in the game, so why not? 
points are a premium and so are goals. Cooper Flax was the one that got the goal. And you tell me what I, I, don't, I think that's in. I don't yeah. see it. I mean, he is way on side. I don't think. Yeah, this is not. They're already coming away from the table. That, that, I, I said it was close before. I don't even yeah. think that was that close. <laughs> Just to be sure they're. they're yeah. Be to, yeah. There's Bobby. Yeah. He's going to be happy about that. Rocking some uh, Air Jordan ones. How about Colin Thomas getting the crowd pumped? Coach Moose animated on that sideline. It's uh, you could tell this has been a taxing year for him just because. Well, he made his he made his plate right just because of all the success he had. And I feel bad for him. He said uh, other coaches were were texting him and saying, "Hey, you doing okay? You doing okay?" He's like, "Yeah, why? Why should we?" But let me tell you, Kyle, and you witness this too. We go to these training grounds, and it's as intense as this matches. I mean, they, it's brutal to the point where, like, wow, like, they're going 100%. I'm a little worried, you know, they're going to get hurt before the match. But it's such a blessing that we can do that, Kyle, you know? Not many people in our shoes with our roles as commentators get to kind of get behind the scenes, see the training rounds, and witness it you know, in person. And just for them to allow us, it's just a blessing. So. Yeah, and, and we've, you know, been able to understand how the team works and and what they want to do and, and, you know, get to know how the, they're approaching the ACC yep. and, and it, it's just been uh, very helpful for, for us to be able to describe the 90 minutes in front of us a little bit better on both sides of, of the ball. It's a big goal for Wake Forest, big goal in this contest with under 30 seconds to go in the first half. A 1-0 lead, even though that is a very, very, very small lead. But uh, just how these matches have been. Wake Forest will take it, and Rabio will also take that. As he may go into the book, maybe a shoulder into the back. So yes, so he did, he's not, unable to get to the book. That's, that's thought just the way that uh, I thought the Mike referee went into his pocket there for a second, too, but... Just quickly to, to yeah. put down these. I was going to say, that was not a yellow card challenge. There wasn't really a counterattack on or anything like that. So here we go. With 11 seconds remaining in this first half. The Deacons leading 1-0 off 12 shots right there in their wheelhouse for their average. And it looks like Garino is going to take it. The former Demon Deacon. Dangerous. Actually, Garino was there to retrieve it and almost put in a volley. It does not go his way. Well, they got a corner, but there's just not enough time for it. And it's definitely not going to go the way of a corner either. So that is how the first 45 will finish. Wake Forest with a plethora of opportunities. Be essential for Boston College to come out of the gate start swinging and how this would change quickly with an early goal right Kyle by Boston College yeah I mean <laughs> that certainly would turn things on its head but if if we keep in trend a uh, <laughs> a goal a quick goal by Wake Forest could also kind of turn the mood a little bit at least for Boston College perspective Eight fouls for Boston College in that first half, and then five for Wake Forest. Had a couple bookings. But uh, that's it. We thought there were going to be a lot more after that first yeah. card was shown. Well, credit to the, the official, too. He showed one card to both teams, and I think it got the point across. 
So, you know, while we thought at least one of those cards was a little soft, it certainly had the intended effect, and it's kept a bit of a lid on the physicality of this game. Rolled over in one touch, maybe had a little bit more time to make a little bit better of a touch there, but uh, I applaud the effort nonetheless. That was by Toro from Revere, Massachusetts. He was selected as the Capelli Sport Plus ID North American team, where they went to Denmark. That's a little fun trip. This one's deep. And it'll be negated. Life Force will gladly take that. There is another one of their international players, Moritz. Gundachach, he is from Germany. I like the sauce you put on that there. Well done. Gundachach. The German. From uh, six foot two is defensive player of the week back in early September. Once again, Wake Forest brewing in this final third, but then the theft. And Boston College is off, trying to quickly get up the pitch. Toro. Andrews and now over to Dos Santos. Dos Santos. A little bit of flavor on that delivery. Skipping that one into the box. But no threat at all. Credit Bassett Umar there for standing on his or staying on his feet. A lot of jockeying for position there with the defender. He probably could have won a foul. Decided to keep playing. Never would criticize a player for that. Dos Santos is uh, sparring with Travis Smith Jr. Tripped up by Toro. Dos Santos from Wyndham, New Hampshire. He's a part of the Seacoast United Phantoms this past summer. Dos Santos did play 77 minutes against Wake Forest last year. Able to take two shots, but of course that ended in a one nil victory for the Demon Deacons. They lead this one 1-0, one hoping to get those goals in bunches as Colin Thomas was poaching on that back porch. Dangerous defensive header there, just trying to send it back to his goalkeeper, but nearly wrong-footed him. If you're going to head it back to your goalkeeper like that under any kind of pressure, it's got to be a good one. Great move forward here for Boston College. Look at the precision. Look at the space slid over. That was Garino that was in there. Rabio, who had four shots in the first half, led all Deacons in shots. He's out there again.
those four shots, two on target. Robbie, of course, missed all last season with an injury. Now 100% healthy. He has not been shy. He has been definitely involved. Slow start to the second 45. Yeah. But, uh, it certainly has, Ty. You're absolutely right. And I was just going to say, you know, we the, we made the comment er, early in the first half that it felt like there was no possession with the intent of keeping the ball. It was all just get it and go. And it feels like both teams have sort of sat back a little bit while on the ball. That was a nice turn by Dos Santos. Even a better recovery there by Travis Smith Jr. Good tackle, too. That is one that <laughs> if, if you get that wrong, your team's down to 10 men. Flax kind of smiling after that shove. A little miscommunication there. The outside channel maybe to find Rabio. Sydney Paris square pass Bassett Umar Umar continues to the left Colin Thomas pokes it up for Sydney Paris oh he tried to go bottom right corner and he just skimmed it by it yeah that's one of those efforts where you say I'm just gonna hit it because he was on the turn he wasn't looking at the goal he said I'm gonna just hit it in the in the vicinity if it finds the net great if it finds a teammate great and unfortunately, Rabio was just a step late at the far post, and he couldn't find the net. So just sort of got between the two options. You see that stat right there with almost 21 shots per game right now with 13. I mentioned we tell you about their dominance at home. As Bassett Umar looking. I love his creativity, Kyle. Yes. He'll look, he'll look, he'll find a deke it, then pull it back, and then kind of like a pump fake. It's funny a, because Bobby Muse told us that he's unorthodox. And I, you know, when he says that, I'm like, well, okay, how? And you watch him and you're like, something's not normal about his dribbling, but I can't quite pin what exactly and it is it's it's different it's unique and it's uh, it's certainly fun to watch but if you're a coach you like that he is not scared to get involved not scared to have contact against other players even after his injury that he suffered last year at Dayton but he is not at all shy he will get involved Cooper Dangerous. Flax thought he was going to get involved earlier in this match with a possible goal, but it just went left. Deke's a little bit of dangerous passing against the press. Some nervy moments there. Yes. At home, coming into this match, Wake Forest outshoots their opponent or have outshot their opponent. 145 shots to 47. Of course, now you have to add what will result here. Ironically, the first match, the opener against VCU, it was dead even at nine and nine in shots. But then after that, they kind of got their footing and they had their way in that final third. The only time that uh, they have been outshot was at you at UCF and then, of course, at Clemson. Central Florida outshot Wake by two, 16 to 14. Clemson outshot him, 19-13. That's an interesting call there. Oh, I see. 
he tried to play advantage and it wasn't there. I thought he was blowing the whistle for that last little bit of contact and it was hard to see exactly what for, but the uh, the incident was earlier. The shocking stat too is as far as shots and the disparities. The season that Elon has this season, they played Elon played Wake Forest right here on this pitch and the Deeks just ran the table on them on shots wise. It ended in one one, but it was twenty nine to nine. And that's a team that uh, in the top ten. Oh, that's a good threaded ball. That's how important that first touch is, though. But the, I mean, it was it's difficult. I don't think Xavier O'Neill knew that was going to He played that nicely. That was brilliantly placed. Deacons with a 4 3 and 3 record on the season, 1 1 and 1 in the ACC. As Umar keeps this on the deck, here is Sidney Paris. He's off to the races. Right foot blast and smacked away by Klein. Good effort by both parties. Sidney Paris with a good, good shot. And Klein able to reject it, but goodness, look at the venom on that one. Yeah, and, and Paris before last time on the other side tried to put the cross along the face of goal. There was no teammate there, so this time he's like, all right, I'm going to shoot it. Colin Thomas, he has been able to engineer at least one goal. Maybe what uh, was considered, of course, a shot that had a very fortuitous deflection. Maybe he can do it again. Here he is on the left side trying to get the defender off balance. Clips this one. And that was intended for Flax and Flax upset because the brilliant play by Boston College. I think Garino there played it off him. Former teammates. And that results in a goal kick. Boston College three two and five on the season. Draws against Syracuse and Louisville. Of course lost to Pitt but everybody's losing to Pitt. And lost just two nil. There's Amani. Amani Thomas surging ahead, moving it to Umar. Travis Smith Jr. moving to that outside back position. You could fool me that uh, he was a center back. He seems to be very, very comfortable playing the outside back position. He sure does. That's a weapon to have a player with that kind of versatility because those two positions are not that similar. Uh, Umar may have stubbed his toe there, but Got right back up, thought it was a stinger, a health to swallow it. And a shot by Rabio. Man, good hit with the left foot. And the Deacons continue to pepper the cage, but only one has been able to slide by Klein. Another fantastic save by Brennan Klein. And what that does is keeps this game within reach for Boston College. Right now, one moment, one touch of the ball, one deflection even, and your level. Him keeping this at a one goal deficit is massive. Ask Eklund on 
groundless law, just a little shaken up. A stoppage of time, and I'm going to use this time to say thank you to our crew for a very hardworking week as I'll pause and show this replay. Yeah, again, look at the, the heat behind it. But, uh, yeah, they've worked hard, Kyle. Busy, busy week for our star-studded crew, our director, Drew DeMarc Antonio, our producer, Everett Hutzo, and, of course, our executive producers. Always, always grinding it out, James Overstreet. Never has any days off. Just under 30 to go. Saturday night ACC match. Points at a premium. Both teams haven't been beaten in the last two straight contests, but teeter-tottering and hoping to get that premium three points. Hard to come by. Every point is valuable in this league. And still 30 minutes to go. That is an eternity yep. in a one goal game between these two teams. The only loss here at home was to VCU, ranked VCU. Which at that time, I don't think people knew how good they were. Flax plays the support to Umar. Here's Perez. His intended target was Sidney Paris. So we had an up, update uh, between two teams. Uh, one team that hoisted the cup two years ago and a team that went to the cup last year. Kyle, what's the score? Well, sorry, I'm going to give you the, the update, but <laughs> as, soon as, <laughs> as soon as that Rabio, every time we try to get something, Rabio starts to cook. But uh, speaking of cook, a lot of things cooking with that, that match. Yeah, a lot, of, lot going on in the last couple of minutes. Goals by both sides. One, one, that's uh, Syrac Syracuse and uh, Notre Dame. We saw a tie, of course, with SMU coming back, trailing 2-0 against Duke. John Kerr doing a great job, as always, in Durham. Oh, look at this. Great read by Umar! Oh! <laughs> That's what I was trying to explain about Umar, is he will kind of hide, and then when you think he's not there, he's there. And he just about made it 2-0. Yeah, and he saw this coming the whole way. Snatched the back pass, and then it is Brennan Klein coming up big, making himself big. And you can see how upset he is. But I think the defender knows what he did there. This corner kick for Wake Forest. Leading 1-0, hoping for another one. Driven. Thomas kind of playing the spot where Prince and Ponza is, and Ponza now moving into the attack. Nice croquetta there. And now surging up. Toro playing that right over the top to Dos Santos. Dos Santos has someone wide open. May have been offside, but it didn't matter. As Trace Alfin comes off his line and says, not today. Both goalkeepers have had a sensational game today. Uh, it's just been fantastic. The only moment in this game that's beaten a goalkeeper came off a very fortunate deflection. That is a gorgeous pass to spring wide at the far post. Xavier O'Neal. Right 
There's Dos Santos again. Nice bend. Just a little too to the left. It's Behar now working, clipping it. Nobody home on that back step. Thomas, Colin Thomas fighting for it. Toro has been impressive too. Brian Toro. Deacons with 17 shots. But they only lead by one nil, and Boston College knows it. And they want to find the equalizer. Sets up Behar. Clipped over right. Oh, good read again. That was a delicious ball played right in front of the six. And they're going to look at this for a handball because they're, I, I'll tell you what, Ty live. I thought I thought he saved a goal. There this is on a knife edge. Asari was there. You gotta look at this. If if it's not a handball, it's a brilliant read. Yeah, that's gonna be a penalty, I think. Well you talk about natural position. I know he's got his hand out. Yeah. It's like you're supposed to you're supposed to head it with your hands. That like, it's just I don't know. The, you know this is the definition. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. Ty, the arm is outstretched. It's you know you've got to be able to jump with balance, but you risk that happening. And unfortunately, Travis Smith Jr. there, and and you could be looking at a potential red card here too. I think the goalkeeper was in a position to make the save. But if you're saving a goal with your hand, the referee has a big call to make here. Wow. Wake let completely off the hook. I'm, I'm shocked. So in that case, obviously with his hand up, and, and we'll see this one more time, Kyle, but then I'm going to ask you about the other one. I said, uh, you're moving in to defend it. His arm's out at a 90 degree angle and it, and it hits his forearm. I, I, it's tough because it's close to his chest, right? The ball is close to his chest, but if that doesn't hit his arm, it makes it through to the goal. Now the goalkeeper's there, right? So you could take that into consideration for yellow card versus red card, but. Okay, but then what about, now let's go back ball. to the Boston College one where his hand is up no, like this. But it's up, up by his chest and if the ball didn't hit his arm, it just would have hit his chest. So there's no advantage but it, gain it there. Hit, it hit his palm. But it's up, Ty, it's up by his chest. There's no we'll advantage gain there. With with this one, his arm is out. If it hadn't hit his arm, it would have made it through to no, the No, no, yeah, I understand that part. Yeah, I would just put the hand on where it was. I, maybe we'll get a chance to look at that again, but it was just how tight those margins are between yes. the two. You can see how tight they are. Tight margins for Sydney Paris. And it's tight no more with a 2-0 lead. Sid Vicious able to slot this one home. And that is what this Wake Forest attack can do, Ty. Right down the other end from a, a, a big break to a big moment. And it doesn't matter. There, Wake Forest says, I don't care what else is happening in this game. We are going to make sure that we decide the final score. And Sidney Paris finishes it off. And Burkhardt gets a yellow card, probably contesting, saying exactly what you know you were saying that he got away with a handball that would have resulted in a PK. Yeah, I. What do you think about that? He's See fine. that one more time. It, it looked like he was level, maybe close enough to take a look, and it looks like they are. There are so many reviews in this game. 
But I, I didn't see quite enough there to change the call. Now we got to be able to pause it and then do a line. The, right? the, yeah, the tough part here is that we don't have Let's see, it is. the million camera angles to show right down the line. I, I think the well, far defender is keeping him on, but it's close. So where the ball is, is good job by again by a replay operator. Yeah, see where the yeah. ball is is the problem released. Here, Ty, it looks off on this camera angle. The problem is you're not looking straight down the line. You're at an angle, and that can cause an optical illusion. I don't think, based on the evidence that we have here, that there's enough to overturn that. I think he's off, but think is not enough of a. You have to be sure. And by that angle, because, you know, in the, in the Premier League or whatever, you have 8 million cameras. Yeah, it, there's not enough there to to reverse the call. I think if you have an angle that's right down the line, you might be able to make that call. But with the evidence here, it's not enough. This team has been grinding, Kyle, and you could see with Coach Muse's reaction to it. He's also grinding a little primal yell, a little Jurgen Klopp in him. He was animated in the, the win at Syracuse, too. And yeah, this season, that's the type of coach you want, though. Double absolutely. Yeah. And and it's been, in a, it's been a roller coaster this season a little bit, so. You can understand that when things start to go right and things start to click yeah. a few times in a row, that can be a, a real emotional win. I mean, how <laughs> if you if you score and you look over and you see your coach or manager or whatever doing a fist bump, I mean, that just has to give you chills, right? Wake Forest hoping that those two goals will be enough for the three points, 18 shots. Need two more to get to where their average is. Three more possibly. And yes, Kyle, the elephant in the room is, what if that was a PK and how different this story would be right now? Yeah, but at the end of the day, if you're Boston College, you have to decide the game yourself, you know, it's it, you, and not rely on right. exactly yeah. exactly and in truth in that situation had the ball not hit his arm goalkeepers probably there so at the end of the day while yes, I, I do think that there should have been a penalty given there Look at this. Oh Nice move forward. Wake Forest really smelling blood in the yeah, water. Yeah, they're now. in their bag right now, Kyle. They're <laughs> they're starting to, to flex. I guess the point that I'm trying to make is, that, you know, it seems like Boston College has wilted a little bit right. under the adversity, and you know that's going to happen at this level. You're going to have moments where referees make calls you don't agree with. Dos Santos, he's been brilliant tonight. Boston College has some really good players. And some big players, too. Dos Santos with two shots, one on frame. But his creation has been what's been impressive to me, along with Behar. Here's Borso, and Borso gets tripped up. And you're going to see Burkhart get. He is, he is really, really flustered. Yeah, he's a little lucky there that he doesn't, because he knows he's on a, a yellow card already. That's stopping a transition. If he wasn't on a yellow, you could potentially see the referee give him a second one, but ref is going to, and now they're going to have a chat because it sounds like he is really going at it. Yeah. And you never as a referee want to give a second yellow for dissent, but good on the official for giving him a warning. Yeah, I do respect that. Rather than quickly pull out the card right, say, listen, if I was any other official, you'd be gone.
Ty, 20 minutes to go. You know, a 2 0 game. We've seen how quick some of these teams in the ACC can strike. Yep. There's certainly plenty of time for Boston College to figure this out if if they can have a short memory. Right. Well, the, this is what a yep. short memory is all about the in sports. The response they had against Louisville was very impressive. I know they're in a 2 0 hole now, but. But you have weapons like that, especially if they get some set pieces in the fact. His former team. Travis Smith Jr. is just swerving in and out and almost was able to move that one close and inside to the 18. Prince and Ponza going up against his old teammate. They did a lot of that in tr on the training grounds. They do it now in an ACC contest. Borso slowly arriving on the far stick, had his hand up, but the theft has Boston College trying to push up the pitch. O'Neill. Here's Toro. Dos Santos to the right. Toro with a blast and another phenomenal world-class save by Trace Alfin. He's got his trampoline today. I mean, what a leap to keep this out. Launching himself to the right. Sometimes I think he wants that space there just to see if they'd go for it so he can punch it out of the way, make a highlight reel save. But Trace has been remarkable as always in the net. Five saves, 10 shots faced, and looking for a clean sheet. Bayar tried to get in there. He was able to sneak inside. Had a look. A free kick. Very dangerous spot. And they play the quick diagonal ball. And not enough in that one. Maybe the intention was to float that one and have the outside back come in and intervene. That was Max Andrews, maybe the possible target. But Trace Alphen said, I'll gladly take that one. Jeffrey White on that half space before he decided to take off. Now he'll pull back as Wake Forest slowly but surely builds and they move up the pitch. Perez got up and didn't wanted a call. There's the advantage now. Travis Smith Jr. gets it close to the touchline. You wonder if this overload when I'll do the switch, but they're going to keep it here on this left channel. Prince and Ponza. I think the Deeks know that they don't need to go forward with this. They're going to make Boston College open up That's before it. they move the impetus forward with a 2 0 lead and 16 and a half to go. Yep. They are very happy to kick this one around and make Boston College force them into a giveaway. I like that. That's a freshman and a sophomore they're working in. They definitely look like they've been around for a long time. And see the score, you see that graphic where they're unbeaten. The, the key number is what two, and they've got it. 16 minutes remaining. How about for the team that's leading the country in shots? Yeah. It's nice to know that you've got a benchmark, right? 16 <laughs> right, shots. Yeah. And we'll probably get enough to get a result.
Wow, what a magician. Dos Santos somehow got out of it. Tried to play it in the middle for his teammates, but Cooper Flax read it well. And then Flax forgot the ball. Monty Thomas flashed some of his skill in the uh, first match against VCU, then had a little bit of a knock. Finally back healthy, but this kid's only 17 years old, Kyle. 17. Prince and Ponza knows all about that. Remember, he was the young one. He was, and he made his mark very early. And I remember saying about Prince and Ponza, it is impossible to tell that this kid's a freshman. Yep. That seems, actually, it didn't seem that long ago, but it is. Yeah. <laughs> Borso is into space. He'll wait for his teammates to get down. He'll try the tough angle. Good stop. Bank Flax will try to see if he can place this in the top shelf. Deflected. Sydney Paris already with a goal. Borso has been impressive, but Coach Muse says he hasn't even got close to to what he expects from him, which I'm allowed to say was wow. <laughs> Haven't even scratched the surface. He has yeah. he has a three point night on the road at Syracuse. Highly recruited. But you can tell by his game. Already confident with that swag as a freshman. I think this name is going to be well known in the ACC by the end of the year and definitely next year. Borso with his hand up. He wants it. Oh, good, Ooh. good. Pump fake left foot all over the bar. Everybody wanted a piece of that cake. And the blast that just skimmed over the board. Another great save from Klein. That's a tight angle. Yep. Not a lot to shoot at there. The issue for Flax there on the rebound too was that he didn't know which foot to take it with because it landed right in the middle. And how about that That's move? a brilliant play by Rabio. He may have lifted over. it, but that hesitation move just enough, right? Just enough to blow right by him. Hey, what do you know? Opposition goalkeeper with a career high in saves <laughs> against Wake Forest. Where have we heard that before? Oh, right. Hey, we Every said, game. Hey, we, we said there is going to stay the same script as the series, but it's also <laughs> kept the same script throughout this whole year here with the goalies putting up career highs and saves. It's amazing. Yeah. Rabio is not at all. How about that? This yep. is what we saw earlier, right? Just tack another one at the bottom. <laughs> Keep it going. <laughs> And, and what's funny is the one that wasn't a career high was, or a season high was at the time. Yeah, yeah. Since been beaten, but. Fessler's come in for Rabio. Rabio, let's just say he has not been shy. He is firing at will. Seven shots for him. Uh, fantastic creative move there on his last shot. Now remember he was out last year, so. He's still trying to get his feet wet. Under 12 to go. Here in Winston-Salem. The wonderful grounds of Spry Stadium. Three points clearly in the clutches of Wake Forest. They lead 2-0. But they are not ready to clock out yet. Good read, Perez, Flax, Flax has Borso to the left. Perez will now play Borso. Borso keeps it on right close to the six. 
Here's Fessler with a shot. It deflected off, and Paris Mitchell was there to claim it. Fessler, good turn. Has Borso to the left. He'll now play him, and Borso looks up. 1v1. Does the smart thing, plays it back to Fessler, and Fessler will now recycle it back to the center back, Prince and Ponza. And how impressive is this from Wake Forest? You, if you only saw this and we said, hey, there's 10 minutes left, which team is 2-0 up? You'd think it's Boston College, the way that Wake Forest is pressuring for right. a third goal. They just have BC totally pinned back, unable to get any pressure in the other direction. Fessler, that was a great turn, and Fessler goes down. That uh, will be a card, and that is by Gundelach from uh, Germany. Yeah, it's a clear hip throw there. With 10 minutes left in the game, that's got to be a booking. I'm going to just turn, though. Just great. He's playing the man, not the ball. Say, so let that one go right across your body, then turn. So what do you know, Kyle? Look who's behind it. Top shooter himself. Yep. The rifleman. Cooper Flax. We've seen him produce a moment of magic from a situation like this before. Look, he's locked in. He is locked in. And yes, if you looked at this picture and not see the score, you would think Wake Forest desperately needs a goal here. But they lead 2-0, and Flax wants his fourth goal of 2024. This is right in his wheelhouse. Well, what will they draw up? Borso has a lot of space here on the left. Little walkover. Fessler. Fessler can also hit it. Fizz is one. And clipped by the head of Borso, but just right in the reach of Klein. Klein, add another one to your stat sheet. Yeah, I actually think that was Kruger, and it's interesting to see them get, uh, you know, him involved in these moments because he's such a big presence there on set pieces. Great creativity by Fessler because it looked like that set piece has kind of died, and then he picked out Kruger. That's yeah, it was Kruger. That's a high degree of difficulty on that header. Facing away from the goal, trying to basically do a pirouette in the air and connect <laughs> with the ball at the same time. Jeffrey White able to distribute to Borso. Borso, he loves those one-on-ones. Nice, clever play by Flax to Borso. Borso tangled up, goes down in the box, and no point to the spot. No, that's tight. That's a close one. But I think the referee has done the right thing here and continue to play on. Just a good physical shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder challenge. Mm, this play here will have Wake Forest throwing it in in their final third. Sato's trying to get involved and pressure the center backs. Well, Prince and Ponza and Travis Smith Jr. was pinched in and play that center back role here for a second. Borso, so nifty on this outside channel, keeping this on the deck, try to slide it right on the coastline of the 18. Mancia with the pressure. And we'll gladly allow this one to go out of bounds for a throw in. That's tough for Prince and Ponza because he could have snatched that away and taken his shot, but he tried the dummy because he knew he had a teammate streaking behind him. Unfortunately, what he couldn't see was that that teammate was covered.
Kessler fizzing it, but right into the grips. Another stop, another save for Klein from Phoenix, Arizona. That one he'll expect himself to make 10 times out of 10. Good pace on the shot, but right at the goalkeeper. Borso, they have allowed him with acres of space. He just loves this on this wing. Up to his fellow freshman classmate, Paris Mitchell. Good vision, Cummins. Cummins, look like he had shooter face on. Maneuvering, look at this. So vicious, Sydney Paris. Putting on a clinic over there. Searching for a brace tonight. The switch to Mancia. Triangle passing between Mancia, Fessler, and Borso. Killeen goes down, so that will bring back a free kick to Boston College. But do the quick start, and it's they keep it short. Yeah, well, Boston College is playing against the clock as much as they're yep. playing against Wake Forest, so they've got to go quick. And you've seen them now completely come out of their shell, just out of necessity more than anything else. Putting the Deeks under a little bit of pressure here, trying to play out from the back. In a blender. Mitchell. Just trying to find enough room to put a shot on. He couldn't. Flax to Fessler. Mancia. Fessler, you can hit it from there. Fessler trying to bend it. And it's just a little off to the right. He saw the defender charging and knew that he had to fire that just a split second quicker than he probably wanted to. And that's why he didn't get the bend on it. That was sort of the quick pitch there. Yeah. He knew he just had to get the ball out of his feet and didn't just get the contact he wanted. Also College trying to maybe get one goal back here with three minutes and some change remaining. They'll have a chance here for a corner. And that means they'll bring in everybody, but Klein will stay back. Joel Torbick has come in for Perez. Torbick, part of this freshman class. Remember Boston College lost a couple of players too. They went to the transfer portal. Went, one went to UVA, two went to South Carolina. So they also had to make some replacements. Trace Alfin, unreal. Way off his line. And is adamant that this will stay a clean sheet. Great save. I mean, falling backwards. And I think, I think he was trying to tell the official there, hey, I touched that, which would be great sportsmanship. <laughs> in a game like this at this level, but the official's going to stick with his goal kick call. If he did touch it, it clipped off the very tips of his fingertips. I, I thought he was trying to say to the official, hey, I got a piece of that. Well, you saw how quickly he got up. I was waiting for another blast. And the tenacity of Trace Alphen, and you always want a goalie that with that kind of leadership and Wake Forest has had that for a long time with Trace. He came in as a youngin. Yeah, he's been the starter for Wake Forest for quite a while. Won the job fair and square and has not let it go. I think we also can say that Boston College 
they may fall again here tonight but I think every ACC team still says the same thing they do not want to play them at home no this is a feisty group and I think on a very good night they they can get some on target and ripple the net they can be a threat on another day this is a tie game 1 1 right now you know if you get that penalty called and then they decide offside on the Wake Forest goal. Now, you can't say that they would have scored the penalty. We've seen Trace Alfin make a number of penalty saves in his career. But point being, there's a very real possibility that, you know, you play this exact game again. And this is a 1-1 result. So Boston College has really played well. I think they've sort of withered after going down 2-0. And that's been that's been the toughest part here for BC. But before that, they were right in it. Yep. Four nine in three in conference play against ranked opponents. ACC gun ranked teams this season, but you know, Wake Forest started off 15th in the country, got upended on their opener. Haven't been back yet, and you would say maybe they have turned the corner with eight seconds ticking down from the clock. The three points gladly accepted by this Wake Forest team as the Deacons prevail 2-0. They'll get seven points in the ACC, move to 5-3-3, three, three, Kyle. Yeah, and the Deeks got, you know, had a couple of moments of fortune today.